Well, that's uh, lovely to meet all of you. I, um, AJ, by the way, comes from Alan John Miller, if you want to know my real name. And, uh, and there's a lot of things I'd like to talk about with you this afternoon. But before we start talking about them, what I would like to do is to firstly challenge you a little bit about your own emotions. And the reason why I'd like to do that is because everything that you're going to hear today is going to be filtered through your own emotions. So what I would like to do is to show you where your emotions are, where they begin, and what kind of emotions that we can divide all of our emotions into. And so whenever you feel a feeling of anger or, or another feeling come up through something I've said, look at, you can look at inside of yourself rather than looking external to yourself. Does that make sense? Because there are going to be many things that challenge you today. And uh, far more things than you are currently feeling will challenge you today. So um, I would like to just firstly explain to you what's actually going on inside of yourself emotionally and what you are made of. So to do that, what I'd like to do is just uh, draw some little diagrams, stick figure diagrams on the board, and we will go through and obviously, too, what I would like is, is for you to ask as many questions as you like. This is interactive, all right? So don't feel afraid to uh, pipe up and start ask questions about anything that comes up. And you can put me under any pressure you wish, whether I respond to your pressure or not, so <laughs> don't be material. All right. What I'd like to do is firstly describe you as, firstly, your <laughs> material body, all right? And then you also have a spirit body. Are most of you aware of that? Yes. Most of you have had some kind of connection with spiritualism before, so you're aware that you've got a material body, the, the body you can touch, and this spirit form, and people see it, sometimes people, who of you are clairvoyant in the audience? Is there anyone who is clairvoyant, can see auras, or see the outline around? So you would see the outline around the person, and you can see that, that is their spirit body or the emanation of light from their spirit body. But there's another part of you that I'd like to talk about mostly today. And I will call it this thing here and your soul. That's what I'd like to talk about mostly today. And by the way, you are a half of a soul. You're not a complete soul. You're a half of a soul. And we'll go into that later as to why that's the case. But firstly what I would like to do is identify what's inside of your soul. Does that make sense? So what do you feel might be inside of your soul? That's, here's the soul. What do you feel is inside of it? Love? Well, love is, a, love is what kind of thing? Emotions. An emotion. So let's say emotions. Anything else? Yes. Fears? Fears. Peace. Peace is an emotion too, is it? Memories? No. Did somebody say? Let's write memories down. Anything else? Experiences. Experiences, which really relate to memories, but they are sensory, so... How about uh, things you haven't yet done? What are what? Hopes. 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 Hopes and dreams, right? Yep. Yeah. Aspirations. Let's write it down as aspirations, sorry. What about the things you are yet to do? Desires. Desires. Put intentions with that, couldn't you, too? Mm -hmm. What you intend to do? Intentions? Now, you can see what we're doing, and we could add a lot more Passion. to this, couldn't we? Passions? Feelings? Who wants to keep you home? <laughs> you get the idea, though? That's your soul. You notice that I haven't included your intellect in your soul and for good reason, which we'll look at later. But there's basically two different types of influences on the soul. 
there's influences that I call error, and there's influences that I call truth. And I'm not talking about your truth, or what you think are errors. I'm talking about God's truth, and what are errors or in disharmony with that truth. So in other words, anything that's error is in disharmony and I'm going to go three, with love. Right? And anything that's going to be truthful is going to be harmonious. Alright. So you get the drift? Yeah. You've basically got your soul, which is this huge container of emotions. And in this container of emotions and all of these other things, desires, passions, intentions, and all those kind of things, you have types of emotions that are disharmonious with love. Any idea of what a, an emotion that's disharmonious with love would be? Anger. Anger, okay. So definitely disharmonious with love. Why? Because it often creates a lot of trouble around you, doesn't it? It, it destroys what's around you often. Now, that, I'm not saying, by the way, at this point, to not feel your anger. Right? So please don't think that I'm saying that. I'm just identifying the truth of some emotions being in harmony with love and some emotions being in disharmony with love. Does that make sense? And you need to still feel all of your emotions, even the ones that are disharmonious with love. Now, today what's going to happen is some anger is going to rise in you. There's also going to be doubts. What would you classify that as? Fear. Is that fear? Is fear in harmony with love? No. Okay. What other kinds of emotions might arise if you're confronted with a belief that you yourself don't have? Doubt. 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 Frustration. Frustration. Now, are they all harmonious with love? No. So the key for you is to see that these are something within you, coming from an emotion within you. Does that make sense? I'm just going to present something to you. I'm here at your disposal to answer any questions that you want. I'm doing it for free because that's what I do wherever I go. And how you respond is actually going to be based on what emotions are going to be harmonious with love or in, dis or in disharmony with love. You follow me? Now that doesn't mean that I expect you to believe everything I say. However, it does mean that as soon as you get angry with what I say, then you're out of harmony with love. Does that make sense? Okay. So there are things I'm going to say that are just going to like just trigger you, right? And one of the thing, first things I'm going to mention is going to trigger you the most, right? And so, and so, what's going to happen then is you've got to let yourself feel. What's the feeling? Are you angry, or are you doubtful, or are you fearful? What are you thinking will happen with my statement? And allow yourself to feel your own emotions. And if you can do that, then you'll keep an open heart. Remember at our introduction, Peter said to, to keep an open mind? Well, I, I'd sort of term it more like keeping an open heart. And the only way to keep an open heart is to be open to your own emotions. Open to your fears, open to your anxieties, open to your doubts, open to your anger, open to your sadness. And if you're open to all of those things, you will find today very interesting. If you're not open to any of those things, you'll find you'll want to get up and walk out. Right? And you're allowed to, by the way. I'm happy with that. You're giving your time as much as I'm giving my time. So if you feel that you've just heard something that you just cannot accept, then that's it. Like, I never want to see AJ's ugly mutt again. <laughs> then away you go. That's fine. I've got no problem with that at all. These are the choices you can make. You have total choice. And that's one of the reasons why I don't charge for anything I do. It's because when you charge, people straight away have a monetary thing that they're going to lose if they walk out. And so you are able to walk out without losing anything. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> because you might lose some truth and that would be a shame. Truth is very important. So, can we all see that we need to allow ourselves to feel? 
whatever comes up. Now you might say, well, AJ, why are you, you know, why are you harping on this, right? AJ, I thought, just one thing. Yeah? With that middle egg, yeah. could, would destiny be a part of that? And later, later, when we're talking about the soul and the, all of the construction of the universe of God, and we will actually talk about destiny a little. And we'll find actually that it's more to do with free will than destiny. Life is far more to do with free will than with destiny. You follow me? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'll talk about why that's the case in a minute. What, what I want to present to you is a summary of the universe and how it all works and everything. All right? The kind of thing that you've probably been looking to find answers about most of your life. And you'll find that there are very concise answers for all of these things that you have experienced and also the things that you can seek to experience and seek to feel. There are very, very clear answers. How many of you actually feel that you're almost tired of looking? because or exhausted in the process of looking for truth. How many of you feel that way? Yeah? Where, where it's just another thing and, and like how do I work out whether this is true or that is true or this is true? And in the end you sort of feel like giving up. Well, we'll also look at why that's the case as well. What's actually happening there as well. What, what's going on not only within ourselves but also within the universe as to why there seems to be this this uh, not enough truth in, in, the, in the world today. I guess that goes for diets and everything, doesn't it? There's 10,000 10, different diets and controversies and yeah. you could be seeking just in that area alone, let alone all the other yeah. parts. Yeah, and the big issues like love and those kind of issues. How many of you have been seeking a love, a truly loving relationship and not really felt like you've ever found one? <laughs> How many of you have been seeking a relationship that's totally truthful and honest and open and you feel like you've never really found one? So, so obviously, truth in our lives, most of us feel like we want it, but often most of us feel like we haven't got it. And uh, there's reasons for that too, which we'll talk about. Alright, well, we usually start with the hardest truth first, and that's the truth about me. Uh, so, um, and this is, you're going to find very difficult to accept, I can guarantee you. <laughs> now, the reason why I'm going to discuss the secrets of the universe with you is because I've lived my way through the secrets of the universe, and I've done that for the last 2,000 years. And I've only lived once on earth before and the person that I lived as then was Yeshua ben Joseph, or you would know as Jesus. So how many are feeling really stressed out? <laughs> and the person I am is Yeshua ben Joseph, or Jesus, from the first century. And I've lived a life of 2,000 years from that moment and I have 2,000 years of memories and feelings about everything that's occurred through that life. Does that make sense? And instead of, most people during this class finish up asking me, how do you know these things? And I try and avoid saying who I am in the, as part of the process because I find that most people find that very confronting. But I want to be totally open and upfront with you. So it's important that you know where I'm coming from. All right? Now you don't have to believe a word I say, and in fact, most people don't. <laughs> and I'm not surprised. <laughs> but there will come a time in the future where you'll look back on at our discussion today and you'll see that I've been, that I've been truthful with you about, about that as well. So in that book, Power Versus Force, it talks about um, the power of consciousness or the level of consciousness. So if Jesus had 1,000, was it 1,000, he did not, his soul would not have needed to have come back to Earth to, um, to learn anything more. All right, so first thing is you're expressing your doubt, and that's great. I am. <laughs> <laughs> 
Second thing is that uh, most people think that coming back to Earth is a need. And that, and that is one thing that you will learn today that is not true. Coming back to Earth is based on desire for love. A desire to actually give love to others. 